I've learned a couple of things about uh, Cosmos Seeds and I thought I would uh, share it with you. Um, as you can see we use um, soil blocks for seeds that are small enough, large ones we do uh, other ways, but for small seeds um, we use um, soil blocks in most cases, just it's convenient, it's uh, monitor monitorable and uh, it's just the way we like to do things. We don't have vast quantities of any one plant so so this works well for us. And uh, about a month ago I started the uh, uh, Cosmos seeds off. Cosmos are a uh, annual uh, and uh, they are uh, not hardy so that they can't be exposed to frost. So we get them started around about um, uh, the, the beginning of April so that in the protected environment here in the germination room and uh, and uh, they remain there until they can be planted out which is around about the middle of May. So I planted all of our cosmos in uh, seed blocks and they all did fairly well. Most never get all germination but most germinated and um, I was quite happy with them except for the one that we use most and the one that's most useful which is purity uh, which is a white cosmos and it's so useful for putting in uh, bouquets to support the uh, other uh, flowers a so-called disc flower and uh, white is the one that we use over and over again the others are uh, uh, coloured and are interesting and um, we've got double ones this year double click and um, and they all they're pretty good support uh, flowers and they uh, if you treat them well and have them in the right conditions then they'll flower nicely for you they do get upset if you uh, treat them badly crowd them or uh, something like this so uh, so we just grow cross moss in the ordinary way every year I started purity uh, off first of all in blocks on the 1st of April and uh, I put 40 in blocks and not a single one of them germinated. The rest of the uh, uh, varieties uh, did fairly well. And here they are in the cold frame uh, just um, uh, settling down nicely and are about to be uh, planted out in the next week or so. But there's no purity and in an effort to get things going so I put some more in, this time 80 uh, uh, on the uh, 16th of April, two weeks later, and once again none uh, germinated. So all the others are doing great and our poor purity, which is the one we really want most, um, is doing absolutely nothing. And uh, my conclusion, because everything else was the same for all the varieties, was that the seeds were no good. So. These seeds haven't got a date on actually, but um, um, they are last year's seeds. And we've got quite a lot of them, so it's a shame that they're not germinating, but they're not. So I got some more seeds. And, uh, Thompson and Morgan in this case. And as you can see here, It's the ones on the bottom left of the camera now which are germinating exceptionally well after only th um, four days. It's the fourth day since they were put in the seed blocks. These ones here. So well over half of those are germinating and are well in the process now of uh, germinating so I'm expecting some more. So the first lesson uh, was uh, uh, today I've learned is that be careful using last year's seed because you may not get germination and it's important that your timing is, is spot on. You don't want to waste two weeks waiting for seeds which are not going to germinate then uh, buy new seeds every year. 
that's expensive and we don't do that and most times we get away with using seeds for a few years sometimes they have uh, a use by date on sometimes they don't um, but I've learned uh, today that sorry I've learned this time that cosmos purity are um, uh, if anything quite um, sensitive so let's look at some cosmos seeds and I'll tell you the second thing I've learned today So these are quite large seeds, uh, about as large as you can uh, uh, do in these small uh, seed blocks. And if you look at each of the seeds, you'll see that there's a shape to them, that there's a sharp end and a blunt end. This is Cosmos seeds. Here we can see that sharp end, blunt end, sharp end, blunt end, sharp end, blunt end, sharp end, blunt end. So the question arises which way around do they go? If you're going to insert them into uh, the soil, there's an upside and a downside, and which is which? And I've learned I having a look at these um, germinating seeds closely that in fact it's the uh, the uh, seed germination will occur from the blunt end uh, as you know the root comes out first the, the radical comes out uh, first and uh, and it comes out from the blunt end and therefore if you are inserting your seeds into the soil carefully rather than just laying them on I've got the blunt end forwards And I would insert it in like so. It does make a bit of a difference because it gives the seed a better chance of uh, doing what it needs to do, which is to germinate. As you know from your biology days, there's two sorts of seed germination, um, hypogeal and epigeal. And if we just have a very close look at some of these uh, seedlings which are developing, We'll, we'll, um, uh, we'll decide whether we've got uh, which sort of germination and also it'll tell us which way round the seed should have gone. So just in this one field of view we've got seedlings at different stages of development so it's interesting to me and I hope to you to have a look and see what's going on. If we look at this one you can see, I hope you can see that the tip of the pencil is now pointing at the uh, root, the radical, and you can see the uh, white furry um, end uh, to that um, projection. Those are the root hairs which are uh, uh, developing, so they're absorbing water at the moment. So the whole of this structure here, the green structure, is the radical, is the root and you can see at the end, hopefully you can see, that the seed head is, is, is there. You can just see the side of the seed head. If we look over at this, sorry, there's, there's the seed head. There's the seed head on this more developed shoot. And there's the seed head. So there's the seed head on this slightly less developed. So the seed head is being lifted up. It's being lifted up out of the soil uh, by the uh, root, which is increasing in size rapidly. So the root, the radical um, here, is 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 shooting up and is lifting the seed, um, the remains of the seed, high into the air. And in fact, if we look at the next one along, this one, you can see that there's the beginnings of leaves forming there. 
So the seed head is covering over the developing uh, cotyledonous seeds, those, uh, sorry, cotyledonous leaves. Those are the first leaves that are, uh, that, the, that the plant will produce. So if we look again at this one, you can see that the leaves are nicely developed and the seed head is still clinging on. And one thing that I did want to show you is which way round that seed head is. It's not immediately apparent from some of those. Ah, this one. There's one here which shows it quite well. This one here. And I hope you can see that the tip of the pencil is now pointing at the sharp end. Remember we looked at the seeds and they had a sharp end and a blunt end. So the pencil is now pointing at the sharp end. And you can see that the root, the radical part, has come from the other end of that seed. And therefore the sharp end is the part which should be pointing up uppermost, should be pointing upwards that gives the seed the best chance. So these guys are doing really well. It's only four days of growth, remember. So I'm really pleased with those and I'm going to get on and uh, transplant some of them now from the most developed block and I'll probably do some more tomorrow because things move uh, pretty rapidly once um, germination occurs and these seed blocks are so small that really they can't support a, a large seedling. We have to get them out and transplant them. So I'll just show you how we uh, do our transplanting from soil blocks into uh, pots. So rooting. So the uh, four inch, well less than four inch um, pots, which we the vast majority of uh, stuff that we transplant on from seed blocks we'd put into these pots and they'll grow on then right through until when we plant them out. So I've made this little gadget which uh, which works really well. We just so it compacts the compost and also puts a little hole which is just the right size for my seed blocks to go in. They're ready to go. And I'm going to do just this block here because it's the one with the most advanced seedlings. It is a little bit awkward because when they're growing so very very rapidly there'll be some in uh, a, a quite advanced stage and there'll be others that haven't yet germinated because uh, it's only four days and therefore um, uh, when I'm doing this I'm going to leave some blocks um, behind and I'll have to sort of rearrange them so that they're touching each other and seed blocking they have to be touching each other so that the water can make its way by capillary action from one uh, block to another. So let's go for it. I don't know if I got in the way of the camera there. That was not a good demonstration, so. These blocks are uh, not holding together very well. You can see how long the roots have got in just that four days.
quite therapeutic this. Also I don't like uh, teasing roots out from a standard seed tray method of, of doing this so all the various things I like and dislike about seed blocks that's one I like that the, that the unit of uh, compost tends to stick together. Just putting these down in the so they can absorb water from below. So there we are, we've got them just stood in about an uh, inch and a half of water and they'll go in there for about um, five, ten minutes so that they can absorb water from below. And so we've now got a, a decimated uh, soil block out of the 20 blocks that were originally um, placed there. We've got a, a germination of um, 16 and we've now, oh sorry there's another one here which is germinating which I didn't take. So what I would routinely do now is try to get the blocks to coalesce back together again so that they're touching and that, that way they can continue on with uh, their germination process. Very rapid germination here after only four days so normally we're doing this after a week, maybe two weeks. And I'm just pushing those two blocks together. In fact, these are the same seedlings, so I can join them onto that block. They normally hold together a little better than this. I'm not sure why they're quite so friable, but... So those are back bedded in again. Comfortably, we'll put those back on the heat mats and they can carry on doing the business. There they are, how we uh, keep them in the right environment so the mats under the perspex over the top to uh, maintain the moisture level. Um, we only have to water them maybe every day, a little bit of water. So we'll just pop a label on and they can go in a slightly lower temperature uh, to uh, grow on uh, but we need to protect the uh, moisture content of the air so that one by one way or another. them on the growing on shelf. Cover of polythene to keep the air around the seedlings uh, moist. Okay, so thanks for watching that uh, video, a little chat about how to deal with early seedlings, some of the problems that you can have to get them started, and uh, a little bit of biology there. So thanks very much indeed for listening, and I'll see you for the next video, I hope.